Jake here for American Muscle, and in this video, we're taking a look at the N2MB WOT box fitting all years and generations of Mustangs. Launch control used to be reserved for only the newest high dollar exotics and sports cars, but that's not the case anymore. If you've got a fuel injected Mustang, great news, this unassuming little box is gonna get you launch control and no lift shift for a fraction of the price of buying a brand new car. It's both a killer party trick and a great tool for drag racers, and it's a pretty affordable mod as well. Launch control has become almost ubiquitous by now, but it wasn't always this way, and that leaves a lot of Mustang owners on the outs. Sure, S550s have had the feature for a while, but what about the rest of you? Your launch control is left entirely up to your feet. Now this little module from N2MB changes the game though. By installing this, you're gonna have that classic two-step launch control, which gives you that cool sound we all know and love, and the ability to launch your car more consistently and more effectively. This module is gonna work with your ECU to cut power to individual ignition coils, thus holding a steady RPM and giving you that cool doo 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 sound. And if your car has a turbo or a supercharger, it's gonna allow the engine to build and hold boost for your launch, allowing you to make the most of it. In fact, they say that you can shave up to three tenths of a second off of your quarter mile time with this module. But the bigger feature here is the no lift shift. If you're not familiar with this, it's basically what the name implies. So if you've got a manual transmission, instead of having to take your foot off the accelerator with every shift, this module is gonna cut the ignition automatically when you depress the clutch, so you can execute the shift without ever having to move your right foot at all. It allows you to minimize downtime with shifts and reduces wear on your transmission as well. It's gonna make for quicker, more effective shifts. This is where the WOT part of this thing's name comes into play. You can stay at wide open throttle all the time. It means quicker shifts, faster lap or quarter mile times. And you're not gonna fall out of boost as easily either. And believe me, once you've experienced no lift shift on a manual car, it makes it really hard to go back to the old way of doing things. Now, one thing I do wanna note about the application is that this may require some adaptation to fit your car in particular, but as you can see, it's not a very complicated setup. Now, this is gonna work on all fuel-injected Mustangs too, so as long as you're not running a carburetor, you can have this and get it installed on your car. Doesn't matter if your car is naturally aspirated, turbocharged, supercharged, manual transmission, or an automatic, so long as you're rocking fuel injection, you're in the clear. Now when it comes to construction, there's not a whole lot to talk about actually, as this is mostly just some wires and some software. However, I do think it's worth noting that the brains of this whole operation is contained in this tiny little plastic box. It's small and can easily be hidden in your car. Nobody's gonna be any wiser to it unless you tell them or let them experience the benefits. Now you can also download the accompanying software from N2MB to be able to adjust some parameters and that's free and available at any time. Plus you get the cord that you need right here to plug it in and get everything adapted. It's just a USB on the back end. So it makes everything just that much easier and more accessible. Pricing for this comes in at about $275, which might seem like a lot of money for something so small, but with the fun potential and the advantages this can bring you at the track, I say that's a pretty small price to pay. Installation is going to get a two out of three on our difficulty meter, and you should plan on this taking you about two hours to complete. Now you are gonna have to do some wiring, so plan on that when you get into it. But everything you need is included. You've got the box, you've got plenty of wires here, everything's ready to go. Not much more I can say about it here at the table. So with that, let's hand things over to one of our AM customers who's gonna show you how to install this on an S197 Mustang so you get a good sense of what's involved. So for the tools we used, uh, we got a screwdriver set. Um, I think you really only need a, just one of each would be sufficient. Uh, metric quarter inch socket set, ratchet, four inch extension, um, I did use a battery powered ratchet as well. That's optional. A uh, pair of wire strippers, a uh, crimp. Um, and I use these also just mainly for the cutting feature on those. <clears throat> um, if you only had to pick one, pick these because they strip the wire. Um, I used a butane soldering iron. Um, flux and solder um, and then here's some of the extras that we ended up using some zip ties uh, these are just cheap 11 inch zip ties uh, cheap grommet assortment 
Um, really only used the 7 16 size. Uh, this is poly loom, uh, wiring cover, and some tapes, mostly black tape, those to color code if you choose to. Um, but these are the tools that should get you. The only thing, oh, the impact to take the wheel off and the appropriate socket. Um, the only thing that's not on the table is a floor jack. You will need a floor jack to jack up the vehicle safely. All right, this is a 2011 Mustang 506 speed watt box install. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is pop the hood, take out the battery and battery tray. Quarter inch ratchet. <clears throat> Deep well socket set. So if the battery's disconnected, I'm gonna disconnect this battery and hold down. Or loosen it up so it's not gonna come out. battery tray also needs to come out looks like some more either eights or tens we'll find out here in just a second Eight now. just to speed things up Eight millimeter bolts, get the battery tray, There's some wires up to it. And just pull this out, it's just a plastic connector. I'm gonna take the battery tray out. Okay, so then the next step is gonna be to go into the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay, so from the passenger side of the vehicle, we need to get into the kick panel. Um, it's going to be down right down here. And uh, let's see. It's going to be right here. You're going to pull this out, and that's just going to pull away. And what we're looking for is that grommet up there. We're going to poke a hole in it from the other side. Uh, so the next step is to jack up the vehicle and uh, pull the front tire off. And we need to get down into this inner fender here. So, looks like we need to go up. Yep, these will work. So if you can see, it's got the little plastic fasteners. And we're gonna try to Peel that out of there. Looks like this. Got a little rust on the brakes. Got some rain today. 
And I have to kind of hold the, the insert on the one side, on the back side, in order to twist this out. So, just finesse those down and out of there. Got one that'll pull out over there. Got one more right here. Okay, so with this pulled down, we can see the grommet from the other side. We just need to safely poke a hole in right in here. Um, I'm just gonna use this screwdriver here to right there and run our wires right through that. Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect little hole. Get cut right in there. So then I'm gonna reinstall this grommet. All back in. Okay, we'll come back over to the uh you still on? Mm -hmm. Passenger side. And we'll get a watt box harness. And do it. And I want to install mine in the glove box. So I'm going to pull the glove box down. And I'm actually going to tape these wires together. I'll show you. Just keep them together and make my life a little bit easier. Just with a little bit of black tape. And I'm just gonna give that a little roll. Here, there should be plenty of wiring. Um, this is what I'm going to do, just so I don't lose it. And then I'm going to try to put it back. Now, I'm going to put this through that hole we made in the grommet. which it is. Right in there, you can see it to the right of the main wiring harness. I'm gonna run the wires through there. They'll come out into the wheel well. And then I'm gonna route them up to where the battery tray was. Okay, so definitely 
a little bit closer to the end. Learn from my mistake. Let's go ahead. Good. Nothing very good. Now, we're going to go to the wheel well. And we got our wires broken out. So we're going to go ahead and pull them through. And then there's a spot right here. Come up top. If you look down in here, there's a spot right here where you can put a grommet to hold those wires. So let me grab my grommet too. This is just a grommet set from Harbor Freight. And I believe we want a 716. So Seven sixteenths, perfect. Okay. So now okay. and we're gonna pull those through. I've got some poly loom or it's hard to freight calls it protective wire wrap, quarter inch. And what I'm going to do is down here where there's this length of wire, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to cover that with some of this balloon uh, that I got right here. So I'll just kind of measure a piece. It. And then it has a slit in it. And what I find the best way of doing this is just to start like right down in here. And just it up and around. Right to the last bit of your tail. And I'm going to do the best I can. Get that shoved in there a little bit. And if I can. It'd be nice to get that up into that clip in. Oh. At least you got some little cover in it. And then I'm gonna grab a couple of zip ties. Okay, so then I got a couple of zip ties. And all I'm going to do is put one at the top and one at the bottom, just to keep that poly moon from coming off. And so that one at the top. And one at the bottom, and I did put it on the on the grommet side to try to tighten it and keep that from coming loose. And then just with my wire cutters here and there, just trim those, hopefully. And there's that there. Okay. So then, I think we're basically done down here. So I'm gonna go ahead for the sake of uh, being able to work.
broken, so I'll have to replace it with something. It'll be fine for now. So then I'm gonna go ahead and throw the wheel back on and torque it. Okay, so inside the car, uh, we've downloaded the Wattbox software um, and got it hooked up to the computer. And what you do is, is uh, you come in and hit read and then it'll update and then you can make all your changes. Um, on the 11 Mustangs, your TPS only goes to about two volts. So they recommend setting it to 75%, which is 1.71, I guess, for this. Um, I don't plan on using the launch control, so I have it set at basically one over what I would ever run at anyways. <clears throat> um, so you can change your your delay for your no lift shift and you can set up your uh, launch country two step over here. When you come in, you do have to change your source to the Ford uh, crankshaft position sensor. Um, it came stuck on, you know, what did it come on? It came on Dodge SRT4, um, so you change that. And then what you can do is, is you're looking down here at the vehicle snapshot. Um, the first test is to push the gas all the way in and hit read. Uh, so it shows 1.98 and it shows down, which is good. Um, the other one is the clutch. So if I push the clutch down and hit read, it shows the full five volts down um, on the box. <clears throat> if you, when you floor it, the box should blink. And then when I push the clutch in, it should stall for just that split second. That means everything is working correctly. Um, and yeah, once you, you just kind of read through here, this is pretty self-explanatory to set up. Um, this is how mine's set up right now. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And actually, if you hover over each one of these boxes, it gives a description down below telling you you know, if you push this, this is what's gonna happen. So, pretty pretty self-explanatory. Um, next is a road test, and we'll see how that goes. Sometimes Fords apparently need to have their misfire management disabled, um, which I don't. So, it may not work right away until I get with my tuner, but we'll see. Okay, so I got my two coil wires. soldered together. You can use a butt connector. Um, that's just fine. I just come on out here with soldering iron and solder and so I'm soldering all my connections like it says to do so on their website. Because these aren't part of a bigger bulkhead, um, what I like to do is just take two zip ties and just put a zip tie around each one. To hold the tape down, um, I like to make sure that tape's not going to back off and just be hanging out later. So what I do is right around where I terminated it. you're holding that flag down if you're going to do this, which I strongly recommend. Keeps the tape from backing off. So now we can these wires in here and then this stuff out here. Box wire. Oh, 
seven. I think what I'm gonna do is kind of go like that. Clip your bus box, your fuse box, whatever ports your boat back in. Wow, much better. All right, so then we put our ground strap back on, or our positive. Yeah, that's a positive strap. I was calling it a ground strap, but I was wrong. That's the positive. That just wasn't Excuses, excuses. Okay, that's tight. So then we want the lid. Tight. And then you can just kind of pick up some tools here. Um, pick up the tools a little bit. I'm using a metric socket set. This one that I have. I used one extension. It's about a four inch, quarter inch ratchet. I like these swivel head style. They work like a screwdriver. Get things done a little bit quicker. Um, talked about the soldering iron I got some basic I got a flat blade screwdriver that's uh, helping me with tabs and whatnot uh, pocket knife you can use a razor blade wire strippers got some pair of cutters you got your water soluble flux in your solder electrical tapes and we'll go over that a little more in depth too in another portion of the video that's gonna wrap it up here for our review and install of the N2MB WOT box fitting all years and gens of Mustang. Thanks so much for watching and for all things Mustang, as always, be sure to keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.